ladies and gentlemen of uh, mechanical engineering so uh, we have come back again to start from where we had left off and we had left off from this sum an equilateral triangle a square and a circle have equal areas what is the ratio of the perimeters of the equilateral triangle to the square to the circle now first of all regarding the areas we all must be knowing that an equilateral triangle is one whose all three sides are equal and if one of the sides is a then its area is given by root 3 by 4 is square a square is something whose all four sides are equal and perpendicular to each other if one of its sides is s then the area will be s square and of course for a circle whose radius if say is r then the area of a circle becomes pi r square so as far as the problem is concerned all these three areas are equal so we can say root 3 by 4 a square is equal to s square is equal to pi r square now because these are equal their individual square roots must also be equal so we can immediately say 3 to the power 1 fourth square root of 3 means 3 to the power half so the further square root of that means 3 to the power half to the power half which is 3 to the power 1 fourth and 4 square root is 2 a is equal to s is equal to root pi r now from this if we assume that this is equal to a constant k then we can say that a is to s is to r will be equal to k divided by the coefficient a will be equal to k divided by the coefficient of a that is 2k by 3 to the power 1 4 is to s is equal to k only is to r is equal to k by root pi so k cancels off and we can multiply all the three terms by 3 to the power 1 fourth into root pi to get uh, an integral value so if we do that if we multiply that then in the first case it will be 2 root pi because 3 to the power 1 fourth will cancel off in the second case it will be 3 to the power 1 fourth into root pi and in the third case it would be 3 to the power 1 by 4 so this is the ratio of a s and r well they have asked us the ratio of the perimeters now what is the perimeter of an equilateral triangle it is thrice of a what is the perimeter of a square it is four times of s and what is the perimeter of a circle of radius r it will be 2 pi r so what will be their ratio their ratio would be equal to 3 into 2 root pi is to 4 into 3 to the power 1 fourth into root pi is to 3 to the power 1 fourth into 2 pi so first let us eradicate the pi's so we can say that this would be equal to 3 into 2 is to 4 into 3 and 1 fourth is to if we eradicate it by root pi if you divide the whole thing by root pi so this will be 2 into 3 to the power 1 4 into root pi so this happens now let us divide everything by 2 so if we do that it becomes equal to 3 is to 
two dot three and one fourth is to three and one fourth root five. Now, if we divide everything by three and one fourth, this becomes three. One minus one fourth, that is three by four, is to two, is to root five. Now, what is three to the power three fourth? Three to the power three fourth can be said to be three to the power three by two. Whole to the power half is to two is to root five. Forgive the space constraint. And three to the power three by two. I'm writing this here. Okay, from here I am writing it here because there's no space here. Three to the power three by two can be said to be three root three. And to the power half means this is to two is to root by. So this is our answer. And we can see option C exactly depicts that. So this is a more or less calculation based thing and is a good enough sum. Let's go on to the next. The average of the monthly salaries of M, N, and S is rupees 4000. The average of the monthly salaries of N, S, and P is rupees 5000. The monthly salary of P is rupees 6000. They have asked us what is the monthly salary of M as a percentage of the monthly salary of P. Now, because the average of the monthly salaries of M, N, S, M, N and S is 4000, we can easily write that M plus N plus S, their total salary, will be 3 into 4000. That is 12,000. Now, they, since it has been said that the monthly salaries of N, S, and P is 5,000, so we can say N plus S plus P, their total salary will be 3 into 5,000. That is 15,000. Simply let us subtract the first one from the second. So let us subtract the first one from the second. So N cancels off, S cancels off, and we get P minus N is equal to 3000. Now they have said that the monthly salary of P is 6000. So I am sure we can understand that the salary of N becomes 3000. What is the monthly salary of M as a percentage of the monthly salary of P? So 3000 is the salary of M, 6000 is the salary of P, percentage, and we all can understand that it is 50%. So the answer would be 50%, and it's option number A. Next. After playing dash hours of tennis, so naturally it must be one, two, three, like that hours. So here it must be two, depicting number two. I am feeling, uh, this should not be third, this should be tired. So a few printing mistakes, of course. I am feeling too tired. This is extremely tired to walk back. So we can see that the option that matches this is number D. So number D is the answer. Now, since mechanical exam uh, engineering uh, gate happened in two phases, so this is the second set. Logical reasoning, it appears. Let us see. Four cities, P, Q, R, and S, are connected through one-way routes as shown in the figure. So you see this is P, this is Q, this is R, this is R, and this is S. And uh, they are connected through one-way routes. You can see the arrows indicate the one-way routes, means you cannot move 
in the opposite direction of the arrows. The travel time between any two connected cities is one hour. So whether you go from Q to P, it will be one hour. Whether you go from S to Q, it would be one hour. Whether you go from P to S, it would be one hour. R to S, one hour. P to R, one hour, etc., etc. The boxes beside each city name describe should be namely uh, quite a few printing mistakes namely describe the starting time of the first train of the day so these are the starting times of the first train of the day see from p the start first train starts at 8 a.m from q it's at 5 a.m etc etc and their frequency of operation so these are the frequencies of operations which means that in station P, the first train starts at 8 a.m. and the next train is at 9.30 a.m., 90 minutes after the first one. And likewise, uh, an example is also given. For example, from city P, the first trains of the day start at 8 a.m. with a frequency of 90 minutes to each of R and S. Quite naturally, because from P, you can go to R as well as go to S. A person does not spend additional time at any city other than the waiting time for the next connecting train. So let us see what has been asked. If the person starts from R, so the person has started from R and he has started at 7 a.m. and is required to visit S is required to visit S and return to R. What is the minimum time required? So we must select the shortest possible route. But then, if one person has to go from R to S, he goes like this, that is fine. But he can't return along this route. So how will he return? He can't travel diagonally also because that is also one way. So the only possibility is traveling upwards to Q. So from R goes to S and then has to go to Q. Now from Q cannot come back to R because this is a one way. So he has to travel to P. Nothing doing. And from P can come back to R. So this is the route that the person starting from R has to take. Right. Now the person now that the route is decided, and this is the shortest possible route, no other route can be as short as this. Having decided the route, we can now say that you see the person has started at 7 a.m. So he immediately catches a train, no waiting time. So one hour is taken, he reaches S at 8 a.m immediately gets another train because the first train from a starts at 8 a.m no wastage time goes to q reaches q at 9 a.m now the first train has started from q at 5 a.m now after 5 a.m two hours later is 7 a.m and another two hours later is exactly 9 a.m so the moment the person reaches Q at 9 a.m., he gets the train, the train which is leaving for P is starting. So no time wasted, he gets on the train. One hour is taken, so he reaches at P at 10 a.m. Now let us look at P. Now in the case of P, the first train starts at 8 a.m. The next train will start at 9.30 a.m., 90 minutes later. The next train will start at 11 a.m., 90 minutes later, one and a half hours. Okay. Uh, this, uh, by stick, I think it is 11 a.m. So that is it. So here the person has to wait for one hour. So he gets his train at 11 a.m. 
and he takes one hour to return back to R and hence he returns to R at 12 noon. Now then what is the time taken? 7 to 12 is 5 hours. So the answer would be 5 hours. Unfortunately, none of the options state 5 hours. Let us check whether there is any mistake on our part or not. Don't think so. But let us see. Might be a printing error considering the number of errors that are there. Let's check once. He starts from R at 7 a.m. He is required to visit S and return to R. Minimum time has been asked for. Minimum time is shortest route. Okay. So the route R to S, because he can't go anywhere else. If he goes to Q, he can't come back to S. And so that will be a lengthy way, much lengthier way. R, Q, P, S, and then again travel to the same route. So that is not that the shortest route is this. So here 7 a.m., one hour, he immediately gets the train, one hour, 8 a.m., immediately gets the train, one hour, 9 a.m., 9 a.m., we know that a train is starting because 120 minutes is two hours gap, so 5, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9. So one hour again here, so he comes, reaches the station P, uh, I mean uh, place P at 10 a.m., but then 8 a.m. and 90 minutes later, 90 minutes is one and a half hours. So 9.30 a.m. is the next train and the next train would be at 11 a.m. Absolutely correct. So he catches the train at 11 a.m. One hour he reaches R. Minimum time. So this five hours is the correct option. I am sure these options somewhere there is a mistake. So the correct answer would be five hours okay let's go on to the next sum beyond doubt the answer is correct let's go on to the next consider the following functions for non non-zero non-zero positive integers lots of printing errors Consider the following functions for non-zero positive integers p and q. So p and q are natural numbers. So they have said function of p and q is p to the power q. Means q p is multiplied together. We all know what the meaning of power is. And hence the function of p1 would be p to the power 1. That is p as has been written. Now function g of pt is p up to q terms. So q terms p has been written. Okay. Now what is this? Uh, once again this is a misprinting. It should have been printed as g of p comma 1 would be equal to p. This should have been printed. Clearly it is understandable. So these are this is the question. Now there is no question printed. So I really don't know what they have asked. Uh, but uh, I presume that, uh, let us make a conjecture because here we can only assume the question has not been printed. So I presume they must have asked which one is correct. Because you see all the signs are different and everything. So let us check one by one. It's simple. What is f of 3 comma 2? f of 3 comma 2 will be nothing but 3 to the power 2. That is, it's 3 into 3, that is 9. Let us see what is g3, 2. g3, 2 means 3 placed twice. g3, 
GPQ means P placed twice, uh, Q times. So G32 means this. So that is 27. This is 3, 2. So that would be 3 into 3, that is 9. So this is it. So if 3, 2 is greater than G32, is absolutely wrong. It should be the opposite way around. F32 should be less than G32. So the first one is proven wrong. Let us look at the second one. F22. What is that? That is nothing but 2 into 2. That is 2 to the power 2. That is 4. What is G22? G22 is nothing but 2 placed twice. That is also equal to 4. So this is correct. Though of course we are just assuming what the question can be because the question hasn't been printed here. So this is yes. So we can say that okay this is a, a correct one. I am not writing to the left because I don't know the questions. I'm writing to the right. Now let us see what is G21. This is the second one. Now let us see what is G21. G21 is nothing but 2 placed once only. So 2 to the power uh, 2 only. So G21 is 2. Now, what is F21? Now, F21 will be also 2. So, we find that G21 is equal to F21. But then there it has been said it's not equal to, which is entirely false. So, this is also wrong. And now, let us look at the last one. See, we already know G22 is 4. So basically, this means F of 4, 2. And F of 4, 2 means 4 into 4. That is 4 squared. That is 16. And here, F of. Now, achha, both are F. Okay. So this one is F of 2, G22 as we have found out is 4. So this would be 2 placed 4 times. So how much would be that? See, this would be equal to f of 2 g22. g22 is 4. <coughs> 2, 4. f of 2, 4 means, oh, oh no, no, no. No, no, this I made a mistake. No, this is F, not G. So 2, 4 means 2 multiplied 4 times. So 2 into 2 into 2, that means 2 to the power 4. That is also equal to 16. 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8, 8 to the 16. So these are equal. Actually, F of 4, 2 is equal to F of 2, 4. Okay, so these are also equal, but it has been given that one is greater than the other. So this is also wrong. So technically speaking, had the question been given, which of the options is correct? We would have said this is correct. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, since the question is not printed here, so we can't have an idea as to what the question is. But generally, for a question like this, this would be the probable question asked. So I presume we have understood the basic crux, even though there is a printing uh, gap here. So I presume we have understood it. Let's go on to the next. Writing too many things on the board, it would be the whiteboard or blackboard. So that spelling is B O R D A R D. While teaching could make the students get bored. I mean, students will yawn. Okay. We feel sleepy. So, bored. So, which one is the correct option? This one, this one is the correct one. 
Right. So simple vocabulary and spellings. A person was born on the fifth Monday of February in a particular year. Now, immediately you must note that February is a special month. In the case of non leap year, February has 28 days, which means exactly four weeks. Exactly four weeks are present. If the February was of 28 days and exactly four weeks were present, then fifth Monday could never happen. So we can clearly understand that the February in question here is a leap year February having 29 days. And 29th Feb, as given here, was a Monday. This was a Monday. Now let us check what has been asked. Which one of the following statements is correct based on the above information? Now, if 29th February is a Monday, they have said the 2nd February of that year is a Tuesday. Absolutely correct. Because if the 29th February is a Monday, which means the first day of the fifth week is a Monday, then the first day of the first week, that is 1st February, must also be a Monday. So the 1st February is Monday, so the 2nd February must be Tuesday. So this is absolutely correct. There will be five Sundays in the month of February in that year. No question. Because 29th February is a Monday, so 28th February will be a Sunday. So only four Sundays can result. Because in, if we reach 28th, only four exact weeks can happen. So every day will be only present four times. So this is absolutely wrong. The first February of that year is a Sunday. We just now found out that the first February is Monday. So this is absolutely wrong. All Mondays of February in that year have even dates. Let's check. First is a Monday. Seven days later, 8th will be a Monday. Seven days later, 15th would be a Monday. Seven days later, 22nd would be a Monday. And since that is a leap year, 29th is a Monday. So even dates are only carried by two, while the others carry odd dates. So this is definitely not true, that all Mondays have even dates. So we can say that the first option only will be the correct option. Let's go on to the next one. Which one of the following is a representation, not to scale and in bold, of all values of x satisfying the inequality as has been given in there? Now, this inequality can be easily said to be since 3 is a positive natural number. So, on multiplying both the sides by 3, the inequality sign won't change. So I can say 3 into 2 minus 5x would be less than equal to 6x minus 5. We have multiplied by 3 here, so 3 has got cancelled. So that's it. <coughs> or 6 minus 15x is less than equal to 6x minus 5. Now, Placing 15x on that side, we get 21x. So 21x is there and 5 goes here. So 5 becomes 11 because plus 5, so 5 plus 6 is 11. So 21x is greater than or equal to 11. So x is greater than or equal to 11 by 21. Now, 11 by 21 is a positive real number. Okay. 
so this can never fit because it has started from a negative number this can never fit because x is less than this positive number so it can never fit however this is the perfect choice because this is a positive real number and x is greater than or equal to that as is indicated by the dot this is definitely not so because here there are two values x is greater than one of them and less than other so option c comes out to be the correct one let us go on to the next this is a simple one next equal sized circular regions are shaded in a square sheet of paper of 1 cm side length so this is also 1 cm this is also 1 cm and they are both squares two cases case m and case n case m and case n this should be case n case n Uh, are considered as shown in the figures below. In the case M, four circles are shaded in the square sheet. We can see that. Mind it, all the circles touch each other and also touch the sides of the square. I hope we have noticed that. And in case N, nine circles are shaded in the square sheet. and here also the same criteria exist all the circles are touching each other obviously next to next i mean this first circle can't touch this circle naturally but next to next they are all touching each other in the pattern show and there is no gap between the side of the square and the circles the square the side of the squares are tangents to the circles so this is the scenario what is the ratio of the areas of the unshaded regions of case m to that of case n now the first thing that we notice here is that if this were the center of the circle and this were the center of this circle and if we drew the diameters the diameter would be equal to 1 cm of both the circles naturally we can say that the radius of each circle would be 1 by 4 cm so the area of the four circles would be how much 4 into pi r square that is equal to pi by 4 so that is the area of the shaded portion shaded portion now here similarly if we take the centers of the circles and if we draw the diameters this whole diameter's length is 1 cm and hence 1 2 3 4 5 6 radii are there so each of the radii would be 1/6 of a cm so what would be the area of this shaded part it would be 9 into pi into 1 by 6 whole square 1 by 6 whole square is 1 by 36 into 9 it cancels by 4 and this is equal to pi by 4 so the ratio of m shaded is to n shaded would be equal to pi by 4 is to pi by 4 that is equal to 1 is to 1 hence since both are lying in the same volumed square so the unshaded ratio would also be equal to 1 is to 1 i hope we understood that m unshaded is to n unshaded would also be equal to 1 is to 1 so we say that this is the option let's go to the next one fish belong this is a critical reasoning question 
and as i said before critical reasoning we have to consider that the passage is nothing but the truth as long as we are doing this passage fish belonging to species s in the deep sea have skins that area i think again i'm sprinting it should be r it should be r extremely black that r extremely black ultra black skin this helps them not only to avoid predators predators means uh, fish or uh, whatever aquatic animals that prey on them means uh, that kill hunt and kill them but also sneakily attack their prey means this species s can sneakily means uh, silently uh, without giving the knowledge that uh, uh, is it is attacking can sneakily attack their prey however having this extra layer of black pigment pigment means coloring matter black pigment results in lower collagen on their skin collagen is an ingredient a natural ingredient making their skin more fragile the absence of collagen makes skin more fragile fragile means can easily break can easily get damaged etc which one of the following is the correct logical inference inference means conclusion based on the information in the above passage let us observe having ultra black skin e acha is only advan this should be advantageous this should be advantageous and o u should be present within e and s having ultra black skin has both na no no i as wrong no has both at Oh no! I I was right. I saw the wrong advantage. So this one will have O U S. Having ultra black skin is only advantageous to species S. No. Other species can also have black skin and be advantageous to them. They haven't said that fish belonging to species S in the deep sea only have skin. that are extremely black no so other species can also have black so this is not the right one having ultra black skin has both advantages and disadvantages two species uh, this one with two this would be four has both advantages and disadvantages for species s yes. absolutely correct see the advantages are avoiding predators sneakily att attacking their prey disadvantages their skin become has low collagen and their skin becomes more fragile that's exactly what has been said so we will without doubt say that this is the correct option in the exam you need not proceed further and go on to the next question but here it's a practice session so let us go on to the next option species s with lower collagen in their skin are at an advantage because it helps them avoid predators absolutely wrong because lower collagen can never be an advantage and lower collagen doesn't help them to avoid predators it's the black color that helps them to avoid it lower collagen is a disadvantage and the next one having ultra black skin is only disadvantageous to species s but advantageous only to their predators absolutely uh, wrong uncalled for statement because nobody has talked about the predators of species s and advantageous to their predators is an entirely wrong statement so this is also wrong and naturally we see that our original choice option b still stays the correct option let's go to the next 
this is another of those logical things which one of the groups given below can be assembled to get the shape that is shown above uh, above means they mean this one i presume yes these are the options a b c uh, using each piece only once without overlapping with each other okay so if you notice this uh, let me do with a different color so that we can distinguish see if you notice this this perfectly fits it so one two three and four and this rectangular so we can say options just by inspection we can say that the rest of the options will not hold i presume that uh, there is no doubt about that right this is there is nothing in this you have just have to observe and comment let us go on to the next one if function x is equal to 2 log of root over e to the power x what is the area bounded by function x for the interval 0 2 on the axis now even though in uh, general ability calculus is uh, i mean uh, in a pure form should not be applied but why should i say should not money need not be applied but then uh, using a bit of integration on this because area bounded integration is the easiest way uh, makes it essentially a one line sum so why not because we all know our calculus so here how we would have been doing this sum in gate so you see function of x is equal to 2 log root over of e to the power x now let us uh, i mean you know we need the area with the axis so the area of the axis would be the integration within the mind of 2 0 of the same thing 2 log root over ex dx this would be it and i am sure everybody of us realize that this would be nothing but 2 into x by 2 e to the power x dx uh, sorry log of x dx log of e to the power x dx i hope we understand this particular thing two two cancels of log of e to the power x so it vanishes basically so this is nothing but 2 0 x dx which is nothing but within this interval x square by 2 x 1 plus 1 by this uh, within the limit of i mean you know 2 and uh, square so this would be 2 to the power 2 divided by 2 minus 0 to the power 2 divided by 2 which essentially this is 0 and this is 2 so it's 2 minus 0 which is equal to 2. Uh, i'm sure so many steps would not have been necessary for all of you because you do know your integration so it would be this i showed all the detailed steps simply because of the fact that uh, I am utilizing a process that technically I should not be using here. But then utilizing normal processes would be so lengthy and laborious that it is meaningless using them. This is the process that you should be using while doing this. I hope this is understood. Let's go on to the next. 
for the past MDs. It should be past. P A S T. For the past MDs, the average daily production at a company was 100 units per day. If today's production of 180 unit changes the average to 110 units per day, what is the value of M? Now, I will say very simple. Previous, this is absolutely logical. If you understand average, this is absolutely logical. See, M days. The average was running at 100. Now, on the M plus 1th day, 1th day, mind it, not M plus 1 days, but M plus 1th day, you produced 180 units. And as a result, in the total M plus 1 days, the average became 110 units. Moral of the story, this extra 80 units that we produced on the M plus 1th day got divided into 10, 10, 10, 10 and so on and so forth among all the days. Now, how many such days can be there? It can be eight days only because 80 by 10 is always equal to eight days. So the M plus 1th day must be the eighth day. So what is the value of M? M is before that. So M must be seven days. So our answer will be seven. Simply logical. Hope this has been understood. Let's go to the next. Ah, we have ended. I hope this whole segment is clear. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's end the session.